Hello, hello. I'm pleased to have the pleasure of your company today and thank you for joining me for another ASM 3D C560 XL tutorial. Today I'm flying the frosty Swiss snowstorm country themed livery. We showcase our other country themed liveries and say why they are country themed in our longer informational videos. So if you have not already had time to take a look at them, I encourage you to do so. Jumping into the cockpit. Today's topic is about this very important little switch. Real Og. Hmm. Small looking thing, huh? But fear not, it's the little engine that could. Wait, wrong story. It's the little switch that will play a big part in your pilot experience, seriously. So pull up a chair, Grasshopper, and listen in. But before we get to the main event, a bit of context. Yep, there's that word again, context. Yes, as you may have noticed in our previous tutorials, we encourage you to look at these tutorials in their numbered order because each one builds on the previous one. Um, and our informationals and tutorials, we talk about context a lot because it's important for us to know that you know why we did and designed things in a certain way in order for you to have the facts and the truth about this aircraft. So what's the story with real and org? Well, here's the plan for today. First, we'll talk about context, why this switch exists, what problem does it solve? We'll then talk about a solution that we designed to solve the problem. And finally, we'll review and look at the actual changes that this switch makes to your overall flight experience. And it's uh, pretty significant. So to begin, context. The real C560XL aircraft's design places, uh, positions, locates, if you will, some very critical EFIS and autopilot instruments on the center panel. Now in the real world, it is simple for pilots to quickly glance down to them or in all likelihood have their co-pilot change settings without needing the pilot to be distracted. But in the sim, you do not have a co-pilot, and so you would normally solve this by creating a few camera views, and then flip back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, to make instrument changes, taking your attention away from the windshield. Caution terrain. What the? Caution terrain. Oh, hold on. Terrain, terrain. Uh, hold okay, on. okay, okay, okay. Terrain, terrain. Pull up. Caution, terrain. Caution, terrain. Terrain, terrain. Pull up. Okay, okay, okay. Is everyone back there okay? <laughs> My goodness. Okay, a bit of a scare there, but being silly, I know, you, you see what I mean. You don't and can't take your eye off the, uh, the aircraft. Fly the aircraft first. That's what you know. instructors always tell you. Now, this back and forth viewing can be done, and some of you may decide to do that even after reviewing this tutorial. So, you know, feel free to do so. But we wanted a less jarring customer simulator experience. So we thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to not have to look down so often? Hmm, how can we create a less jarring sim experience? Not better, just different. Listen, I don't know about you, but I certainly would not want to be doing this to try to keep up with changing ADC requirements, especially when I am low and slow, in bad weather, on final approach, you know, all the things that are critical phases of the flight. And since we're talking about experiences, another thing worth noting here is that the real C560 does not have an auto throttle. Seriously, it does not have an auto throttle. And when we were speaking to pilots about this, one of them quipped to us and said, my AP is my CP. Get it? CP, right seat? Anyway, auto throttle. Well, that would be a welcome long distance flying convenience, but also it would be very handy when trying to fly precise power curve ascents or to peg green angle of attack and speed on a precision final approach. So the pilot experience things we worried about here for context were jarring to look down and fiddle with small buttons to say nothing of the fact that it's a flight safety risk sometimes. And secondly, what? No auto throttle? 
we wondered how that would be received by the simulator pilots. Anyway, our solution was to build two sets of paneling. One that would appeal to the purists who only wanted the real aircraft experience, no matter what that was, fine. But we also wanted to offer an option for those who wanted a less jarring experience and an auto throttle. So with that context in mind, with the switch on real, you can now keep everything real and authentic or you can flip it to what we call the augmented mode for a less jarring simulator flight experience with an auto throttle and some other stuff that we'll get to in a minute. Now it's important to call out here that with the exception of the aforementioned auto throttle that all the instruments no matter their location or position or look or feel or design change that you will see are functionally no different only their position changes. So for example the EFIS panel positioned here in the realistic mode performs the same functions, has the same buttons, has the same 3D lighting as when it is positioned down here in the augmented mode. Same goes for the master autopilot panel. It has the same functionality in both locations. You'll find four other pilot experience enhancements provided in the augmented mode. One. A digital readout was added for the AOA gauge. 2. Speed to fly dot indicators were added to the usual chevrons found in the AOA indexer on the down tube. And we'll get to those details in later tutorials. 3. The autopilot master panel now displays the position number of the turn dial. Fourth and finally, the VVI dial also has its own digital readout. So, are you keeping up, Grasshopper? There's a switch, real and augmented modes on demand. The augmented mode helps to not have to look down and have a jarring experience so much. It has an auto throttle, and the mode now adds four pilot experience upgrades. Okay, so now let's dig deeper and take a look at each of the buttons and dials found on each panel. We'll identify them but how they actually function will be covered in later more detailed nav and flight tutorials. So this is the realistic mode and the pilot side EFIS panel is positioned on the front panel. The co-pilots panel is positioned on the center panel just above the single MFD control panel. The EFIS buttons are Oh, and remember, the functions are the same in real or augmented modes, just the location of the EFIS changes. So the functions are left to right, the rows and arc button changes the MFD HSI view. This displays speed or mark in the autopilot speed target window in the PFD. The next one is for PFD aircraft symbology. Choose whichever one you like. This is to change barometer options. The handy little wind button displays strength and direction in the lower half of the PFD. Use this one to change nav station selection. Um, also notice that the DME changes too, which provides station ID and other important flight and time data. Obviously, this assumes you have a valid nav station tuned to the RMU up here. Oh, by the way, a quick shortcut. Open the map, click, click, there you go radio tuned and then you'll select GPS if you have loaded a flight plan requiring GPS navigation. By the way you cannot click this button off you need to instead select nav1 or nav2 to change the GPS tuning just a small detail there. Underneath are the two OBS course dials and the heading dial. Now as you can see down here in the realistic mode the autopilot master panel is positioned on the center console. This dial sets climb and descent vertical velocity rates which the autopilot then follows when VS mode is engaged. The yaw damper is on by default but this turns it off or on as needed. To the right is the all important bank setting dial. Pay special attention to this one because it's absolutely critical that it be set to 3, the vertical 12 o'clock position for the autopilot to engage. That's an authentic flight safety feature in this jet's design. If your AP is not engaging, it is because this dial is not set to 3. And with the dial set to 3, the autopilot can then be engaged from here. Bank angle, bank angle. 
This low button limits bank angles to remain within the green bank safety arc you see in the PFD. Setting this to on ensures that the jet flies within its realistic G-load design limits. This dial sets the altitude bug for the autopilot. And this button engages the altitude hold for the autopilot. Now let's flip the switch to the augmented mode. By the way, the augmented mode is the default panel setting when you first load the jet. In this mode, the EFIS and course heading strip are repositioned from the front panel down to the center panel. The functionality, as I described a bit earlier, is all still the same. And we duplicate the autopilot master panel up front, but add some augmentation. So let's talk about that. The panel now has a bank angle digital readout as does the vertical velocity indication. This readout is in feet per minute and cannot be changed. Over to the left, notice some bigger pilot experience augmentation changes. The AOA gauge now has a digital readout. The course and heading panel now has the autopilot altitude bug setting dial. And below that, you have a choice of two PFD aircraft symbology that shows in the PFD. Choose whichever one you want again. Here we select VOR 1, 2, or the GPS navigation. This here is the big change. It's the added auto throttle section. With the AP on, engaging the auto throttle sets the speed bug for the auto throttle to follow, but you can change that by turning the dial. This allows pilots to fly very precise air speeds, and that's especially helpful in ATC space and for precision approaches. But the realistic mode without auto throttle is also a great flight experience and challenge. It's up to you. Pressing the dial alternates the speed display options for the speed bug. This dial has two parts. The lower ring changes the MFD primary display to rows and arc. And the upper ring selects one of the six MFD modes. And the last dial changes the radio altimeter minimums callout. You can see that number it's set in the PFD, and this will trigger this annunciator light, and a call out will be made when minimums are reached. Here in the down tube, you can see the additional dots that have been added to the AOA indexer. We are here on an ILS final approach into Boeing Field in Seattle, and the red dot tells me that I'm going a little too fast. So let's slow down. There we go, okay. Now we got the green chevron and the green dots, which means that the approach angle of attack and the speed are good for this flap setting. And of course, that guidance will change once the flap settings change. Okay, so there you have it. A small switch with a mighty purpose that gives you a realistic set of panel placements, or on demand, you can switch that out for an augmented instrument panel experience that adds some bells and whistles. So, real or augmented panels, it's up to you, but we hope you always have a great flight experience in the 560XL. Thanks for your company, cheers, and happy flying. Bye.